chaotic moments after a bomb blast. Marines run with stretchers to help their fallen comrades. An explosion went off right behind this building just moments ago. A radio call came in, two Marines are down. Two men are carried away. A third, less seriously wounded, manages to walk out. They are two bomb disposal experts, known as an EOD team, and a combat engineer. Captain Nathan Opie rushes to the scene and gets the bad news from one of his men. He said that they got Greer and they got him pretty bad. And uh, at that point, we, uh, you know, he, he brought me over there to Greer and I, I saw the EOD techs as well and, and we just started getting them on stretchers and getting them out of there. Corporal Daniel Greer of the 4th Combat Engineer Battalion has a serious brain injury, which will later claim his life. Sergeant Johnny Jones, an explosives disposal expert, has lost both his legs. Staff Sergeant Eric Shear, also a bomb expert, suffers serious shrapnel wounds. In the week before the blast, we'd followed these three men closely as their unit occupied Safar Bazaar, which has been heavily mined by the Taliban. As the initial wave enters the town, Sergeant Jones, wearing a helmet camera, sees the first bomb explode. Hey, is everybody all right? This time, the Marines are lucky. No one is hurt. Jones and Shear examine the device that has gone off and then find two more bombs that are ready to explode. They slowly unearth them. As they prepare to cut the wire to a detonator, they break the tension with a flash of humor. I love you. Right now, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> we call this an anti-personnel. Yeah. Specifically made to uh, hurt someone, if not kill them. Uh, hurt someone, you take a few guys out of the fight. Greer's job as an engineer is to open up safe routes for the other Marines to travel along. Take them on the wall a little bit and then come out. Often that means blasting holes in walls to avoid possible booby traps. After four days inside the town, the Marines have already discovered 40 IEDs. Now their work is slow and meticulous. And in areas like this, which are laced with bombs, the Marines walk along these narrow paths which have been cleared, literally stepping in each other's footprints. When possible, they use robots and explosives to try to detonate IEDs from a distance. Going in on foot is their last resort. We'll go down and try to find the wires ourselves and see what's going on. So you're going to walk out there? Yes, sir. Be careful. Yes, sir. It is on day seven that Jones, Greer and Shear are blown up. They're medevaced out. The Marines they leave behind are devastated. Are these guys, you work with them, you know them? Best friends. How does one react to something like this? Um, you kind of have to stay static, I mean, on it right now. I mean, it, uh, later it'll take effect. Right now, we've had a relatively rough summer. Um, but you just got to keep grinding, and this will this will come too when I get back. You know, it'll it'll when you have time to think. Sergeant Matthew Jackson is another bomb disposal expert who worked closely with the team. He's asked to do the post-blast analysis. There was just something they didn't didn't see. You know, it's nobody's fault. Yeah. It's just that's how it happens. The Marines will continue to press forwards. That's what they do. They are gaining ground in Helmand, but the human costs are mounting. On the outside, they'll hang tough. On the inside, the hurt is growing. Terry McCarthy, CBS News, Safar Bazaar, Southern Afghanistan.